lovelies, I hope you're all well. So we're carrying on with our series today on slice layering and I'm going to show you slice layering with iron on. So I've done all my slice layering techniques in design space and if you've not seen this video I'll link to it on the screen now and I'll also link to it in the description below and it takes you through how you can prep your images for slice layering. Slice layering is great because it allows you to get perfect placement and it means that you are layering within not on top so you don't have to worry about things like glitter which you shouldn't layer on top of you can use at any point in the process I'm going to go to make it the images I'm using today is from design bundles I will link to it below it is an affiliate link and the description has all the information on that we can go to make it I'm going to select on mat. I'm using a Maker 3 today, but you can do this with any of the machines. Just make sure if you're using Joy, obviously you're aware of the sizing. I'm not using Smart Material today, so I am going to select on mat. And I need to come in and make sure that I mirror every single layer because we are using iron on today. So I want to make sure that I mirror each layer. It's not enough just to mirror one, you have to mirror all of them. We can then go to continue and I can then select my materials. Don't forget, you'll need to select the material for each mat and you'll do that when it comes to the next mat. So you want to select your first mat, select the material, and then when you select your next mat, you can select the next material. If you don't have material setting like this because you're on one of the air machines, so the Explore, the Air 2, if you set your dial to more materials, this will then show up and you can browse all materials and search for the material that you're going to be working with. You always want to use a green standard grip mat with iron-on. And you always want to place iron on carrier sheet down. So depending on the iron on the brand, it could be the color side. So you want to place the color side down or the pattern side down. That's not always obvious though. Some people say the shiny side. So normally there is a shiny side and then a wax side. But again, that's not always obvious. So we like to say carrier sheet down. So if I just peel a very small corner, you'll see that that's my material and that is my carrier sheet. So the carrier sheet is what is going down onto the mat. So as I say, we like to say carrier sheet. Some people say color side, some people say shiny side but it does absolutely depend on the material. So always remember, if you're unsure, just peel a little bit back and it's the carrier sheet that wants to go down onto the mat. But normally there'll be a shiny surface and a wax surface. And again, the shiny surface is what's going down onto the mat. So I'm going to place it carrier sheet down onto my mat. And then I'm going to use a fabric brayer. This is the Cricut one, but you can use a non-stick brayer or you can use a scraper to then secure it to the mat. Make sure there's no air bubbles in it, there's nothing lifting up and you've got a nice seal between your iron-on and your mat. I can then load my mat up and then press my go button. And I can then unload my mat. When removing materials from your mat, what you ideally want to do is turn your mat over and then remove like so. Now you don't want to over bend your mat. So what I like to do is just move my mat around until my material is removed. 
it will stop it from buckling it will stop it especially if it's something like cardstock it'll stop it from all bubbling up and getting creased and the same with iron-on as well because once it's cut and vinyl sometimes if it's manipulated too much you can get little air bubbles in the cut so it's always worth turning your mat over just make sure to not over bend your mat I can then turn my iron on over and we're going to weed it from the back so normally it will be this waxy surface and there we go that is now weeded and we can carry on with the rest of our layers So I've got an easy press here, I'm going to switch it on and I'm going to set my temperature to 330 degrees Fahrenheit because that's what I know works. If you're ever unsure, you want to go to the Cricut.com heat guide, you can input the materials, the easy press or the auto press you're using and it'll give you the time, temperature and instructions. So I'm going to set my temperature just by clicking on the temperature button. You can also switch between Fahrenheit and centigrade. So if you hold it down, it will switch to centigrade or back to Fahrenheit, which is what I like to work in. So I'm going to set it to 3.30 and the time I'm just going to set To 30 seconds. I'm using an easy press mat as my base surface. You always want to make sure you're putting it on something sturdy as well. Don't ever use an easy press on an ironing board. It hasn't got the stability that you need. It's got too much give in it. So a nice solid workbench or a kitchen counter or dining room table and then an easy press mat. Easy press mats are great because they've got lots of technology in them which allows the heat to come back up through so you're heating it not just from the top with your easy press but from the bottom to the top with your easy press mat. I'm just using a cushion cover today and you'll see once my easy press comes to temperature the little C will turn green. I'm just going to come in and preheat my surface just for about five seconds. A, to take out any moisture that may be in there, especially if you have an outside craft room like I do, and B, to take out any creases. I'm gonna put my outline layer down first because obviously I can then place everything else within it. You'll know, especially with glitter iron on, that you can be left with a lot of residue on your carrier sheet. Don't worry, as long as it hasn't got that adhesive back to it and it is just the residue, it won't transfer. And any that does will just wash off. Now I can actually do two layers at a time because they're not within each other. So I can do this and I can do the text. I just obviously want to make sure that they're not overlapping, but there's no reason why. Because they're the same time and temperature, I can't do them together. Now they've still got their carrier sheets on, so I actually don't need to put a Teflon or a protective sheet like butcher paper on here because they have still got their carrier sheets. Press my C and I'm just going to push down really gently. I'm not putting all my weight on, I'm not lifting myself off up the table. There's no need because I've done all the prep. I've got a nice sturdy surface, I've got my easy press mat, I've preheated this to remove any moisture. So I literally just need to lean on it. Once it's done that first one it'll beep at me and I can just move it across 
and do the other areas. I can then lift this up and return it to its cradle. It's always worth checking the instructions because it will tell you if it's a warm peel or a cool peel. They're very rarely a hot peel. So come in and just give it a waft to help cool it down. So to peel, what I like to do is rather than lifting it up, because that can encourage some friction, is what I like to do is just peel it back. So I'm just peeling it back on itself rather than pulling it up. Now some people like to do 15 seconds on the back before they peel. I actually do 15 seconds on the back at the end once I've done all the layers. It's just my personal preference. I can then come in with my next layer and I can get that beautifully lined up without any issue because this is the brilliant thing about slice layering. Now glitter iron on is really hardy so I could actually do this even though this bit's exposed but this is not glitter iron on this is a reflective iron on so I need to make sure that this is protected so I can either use butcher paper, parchment paper or a teflon sheet and again just come in for the appropriate time and I don't need to put a huge amount of pressure on here I'm literally just leaning on it and again we can just cool that down so it's a nice warm peel rather than a hot peel and again I like to roll back rather than pull up so just a nice gentle roll back I can lift that up, put it back in its cradle, gently just roll that back. I then like to turn it over, and you can see I've used this pillowcase for experimenting with in the past. I'm going to reduce my time to 15 seconds, and I'm just going to heat the back up in sections 15 seconds at a time just to really help secure that iron on onto our cushion case for us and there we go there is our finished pillowcase we've got three layers of glitter and a holographic if we'd not done slice layering we couldn't have done this because we cannot layer on top of glitter we can but we shouldn't so this has allowed us to not only get placement perfect but it means that we can actually use multi-materials that we could maybe only use on one layer previously. So it's definitely worth doing slice layering. It doesn't work for all images and we are going to look at other images and how you can get perfect placement with those, both for vinyl and iron-on. But for now, this is how you do slice layering with iron-on. Any questions, please do ask them below. Don't forget, if you've not seen the design space setting up of slice layering, go and watch that. It is in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It does help me an awful lot. And the image link for design bundles is in the description again that's an affiliate link it does really help me keep the channel going doing all the other things that we do such as free virtual events in our group uk cricket creators all our testing we do and of course our giveaways thank you for joining me and i'll see you all again soon bye